So, I'm here with Tatiana, a.k.a. Blue Harp Girl. Hi. How you been? Good. Cool. So, um, let's get right into it. Why are you playing harp? Well, uh, I started on piano when I was very young. My mother's Russian. She put me in front of a piano when I was three years old. Uh, and was at a conservatory in Moscow where I was living. Uh, I think I was 10 or 11. And they offered me to play a second instrument. And they were like, you can either play the flute the trombone or the harp. And uh, I was a little princess back then, so I was like, absolutely, I want to play the harp. And I, yeah, I just fell in love with it. It's such a magical, healing, therapeutic, incredible instrument. So it's sort of a no-brainer, you know? Like, who wouldn't want to play the harp? I don't know. I think no, it's I great. agree. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking, you don't really see a lot of harpists in mainstream music. So yeah. I'm wondering, who are your influences or what well, I you mean, I, I'm classically trained, but I I studied jazz, um, and I I was I was always writing songs as a kid, uh, and then I kind of discovered that there are other harpists that don't play classical music, like Alice Coltrane and Dorothy Ashby. Uh, there's this one album, Afro Harping, that like changed my life because I was like oh my god you don't just have to sit in an orchestra pit and play glissandos and count bars like you can play something rhythmic and interesting and cool and and like play with a band and that's that's sort of like my jumping off point for how I incorporate harp in my music was like there's a way to do this that's that's completely devolved from like classical music cool. yeah so um you studied at Berkeley, so is that yeah. part of your classical training? No, Berkeley was like my break from classical training. So that's I, where you went over into more contemporary music. That's where I studied jazz. Yeah, I mean, I, I up until that point, all of my my harp technique was classical, mm -hmm. and then Berkeley is a really great jazz school, you know. So uh, I just sort of jumped head head first into this like new world for me. You know, I I, I never listened to jazz before, and suddenly. You know, um, we were studying John Coltrane and Miles Davis and Joe Henderson and, you know, and even like all of my friends were jazz musicians. So it just sort of became this big influence on, on the music I was listening to and writing. So, yeah, it was it was kind of incredible to be there. And you got a full scholarship. I did. Yeah. I mean, it helps that I play the harp. Uh, but yeah, I was so, so lucky, so blessed to have gone there and, and not had to pay for it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So now you're back in London. Um, what's happening here? I saw you're collaborating with uh, another artist. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm from London originally uh, and I, I've spent a long time abroad. I left when I was 15 and I moved to Singapore. I was there for three years and then obviously the four years in the States. And, you know, sort of a, had a mild identity crisis. I was like, am I British? Am I, am I Russian? Am I, you know, uh, am I American? You know, and felt like I needed to kind of establish a home base. Um, and I think London's a great place to do that, you know. Uh, and this is, this is where I'm from. I grew up in Southeast London, so I'm really happy to be back. But yes, collaborating with uh, a few different people. Um, I'm... One of my dear friends from Boston is a Swedish singer-songwriter, Matilda Grate. Mm -hmm. She is, lives in Stockholm, uh, but she kind of we go back and forth. I just was in Sweden for a few days and played a couple shows, wrote some music. She was just here literally like, this weekend, so uh, that's been really nice. Just like we're so close, technically. I mean, could be closer, but it's 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 so easy. You can That's just a two-hour flight. Yeah. It's so easy, yeah. you know. And then and then here it's been interesting. I've started um, meeting new, different kinds of musicians, and and there was uh, I'm playing in this girl Marie Dahlstrom. Her her show on the twenty second. She's a great singer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's all happening. So what's going to happen this year, 2018? 2018. In terms of performances, releases, yeah. collaboration projects. What's in the books? Well. Right now, I'm writing an EP, uh, and this is sort of going to be my musical manifesto. Uh, I, f I feel like I, I spent the last four years just like pulling together different influences and, and things that I was inspired by and really honing my sound, and uh, I feel ready now to like 
put that out into the world and, and make something that's really cohesive and really represents like where I'm at in my musical journey you know so do you so. have like a title or a concept or an elevator pitch for the kind of yeah i mean the idea is to keep it very simple i just want to so it's self-produced i, do, I make everything myself i do everything in ableton um <clears throat> and keep it to just the gear and the the things that i've built in my life set so i have my korg mini log it's like a poly four voice polyphonic syn- synthesizer it's great it sounds awesome kind of like a little 80s which is definitely a thing for me <laughs> uh, and then my harmonizer mm-hmm. I do lots of like vocal processing and and stacked harmonies and the harp so the harp r- is running through Ableton again okay. lots of delays and reverbs and stuff um, and just this like enormous drum rack that I've bu- I've built like over over a long period of time and it's I'm really just trying to keep it to like those elements um, and record it in the same way that I would perform it live. So it is kind of like a concept EP in that sense. Like it's um, it's supposed to be very cohesive and like one song leading into another and that also leading into the, the way that it would be performed live as well, so. And when do you think you're ready to perform that EP live? I'm, I'm looking at a July release date. Cool. June, July, late June. That's gonna July. be a release party? Oh yeah, there's gonna be a show, there's gonna be a release party, the whole shebang. Cool. Yeah. Um, you've traveled around the world. Mm-hmm. You've studied at Berkeley. Yeah. You have classical training. You must have learned a few things that most musicians don't know about. So do you have any like words of wisdom or any uh, advice you can pass on to hmm. aspiring artists? If I was gonna give an- anyone any any advice, it would be, yeah, just set yourself a, a, a period of time in your day where you where you remove yourself from the wider world and and really use that time to to try and enter that kind of creative space yeah cool i like it um you got a lot of stuff going on what is the best place to go online and find out more about you you have a website i know i have a website i'm i'm kind of a an instagram girl you yeah. could say yeah instagram blue harp girl at Blue Heart Grill. Thank yeah. you very much. What a pleasure, Freddie. <laughs> Thank you.